I've taken from the streets of the Bronx to this moment on Hollywood Boulevard. And this all feels, I don't know, kind of surreal. I just wanted to be good at what I did. I wanted to be a great actress. I wanted to be a great singer. I wanted to be a great performer to share the joy of entertaining you. This is Hollywood with the mecca of entertainment around the world. It all starts right here. This is what it all comes down to. It all comes down to your family and working hard to love and protect and do everything that you can to make your family and the ones you love their lives better. It's thrilling to have Anna Mae Wong, the first Asian American actress, as my neighbor. We could actually start our own little Chinatown right here. <laughs> I think about what a star is and I think about a star being liked for so many people. A star you can always see even in darkness. So my hope is that anyone in this town whose dreams may be on life support, I want you to walk past this star in particular and know that I've been there. This one in particular is for the underdogs. an incredible day. I'm trying to soak it all in. Here's the thing about these Hollywood stars. They're permanent. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. Well, we get to see this star every day on the corner of Hollywood and Argyle. Lo único que les puedo decir es que siempre recuerden que trabajando mucho, sin descansar y respetándose uno mismo y respetando a los demás, se pueden lograr cosas que uno nunca se soñó. Gracias a todos mis fans por estar aquí y un beso a Colombia y a todos los colombianos que están aquí. Gracias por venir. I feel like a lot of people probably only ever thought I'd make it to the Walk of Shame, but here I am. Today for me is a celebration of something that my dad taught me and that is, to thine own self be true. And if you walk along this boulevard and you look at these names, there is a power that lies in that. There's a power in believing in yourself.
Hollywood. That's good we bally hooly Hollywood. Where any office boy or young mechanic can be a panic with just a good looking pan. Good morning, good morning everyone. My name is Steve Nissen. I am the president and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. Welcome all of you. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Hollywood Chamber's Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. The Chamber's proudly hosted this globally iconic Walk of Fame event for millions of people around the world for more than 60 years. And you know, every ceremony we do celebrates uh, an incredible, accomplished uh, performer and artist. Today is no exception. We not only honor an artist, but we have special guests who come and appear as well. And I'd like to introduce one of them now, the MC of today's event. He is a Walk of Famer in his own right. He is a Grammy Award winner, Songwriter Hall of Famer, and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Jimmy Jam. Thank you, Steve. That's a heck of an intro. How's everybody doing today? We're good? I'm excited to be the MC today as we welcome Melba Moore to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, before we get started, let's give a big shout out to our fans watching around the world on our live stream media partner, Variety. So thank you, Variety and a big sponsor to uh, our sponsor our, to keep us hydrated is Niagara. So give it up for Niagara so we're not, you know, we're hydrated because that's, that's important. So the Hollywood Walk of Fame recognizes achievement in the categories of motion pictures, radio, live theater, live performance, sports entertainment, recording, and television. So today, in the category of live theater, live performance, we honor Melba Moore with star number 2760 on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, before we welcome Melba to the stage, let me tell you a little bit about her. And I got to read this because there's so much stuff here. I'm not going to commit it to memory. First of all, let's start out with the fact that Melba is a prolific five octave singer, a Tony Award winning actress and a four-time Grammy-nominated artist. She has conquered the genres of Broadway, contemporary soul, R&B and pop, rock, jazz, gospel, and classical music. Now, Melba started her Broadway career in the original cast of Hair, which I used to have some, but no, no more, <laughs> becoming the first African-American woman to replace a white lead actress in the role. She would later, later solidify her place in America's heart with her Tony Award-winning performance as Ludi Bell Gussie Mae Jenkins in Pearly. You know that, right? Her other Broadway works include Timbuktu, Innocent Black, Ain't Misbehavin', Brooklyn, Chicago, and Les Miserables. Setting, setting another first when she became the first black woman to play the lead role of Fantine. So just nothing but history happening here today. You get that? Now, Melba's success only continued to expand with her recording career. Her cover of friend Aretha Franklin's classic Lean On Me earned her a Grammy nomination, and her hit Read My Lips made her the first African-American woman nominated for a Grammy in the rock category. All right. Now, she's received many awards, Drama Desk Award, Ellis Island Award, the Artist Guild Award, the Trumpet Award of Excellence, and a History Makers Tribute, amongst others. But more than that, Melba is an entertainer who also happens to be a civil and equal rights activist. That's right. Melba's 1990 version of Lift Every Voice and Sing, which she recorded with B.B. and C.C. Winans, Stevie Wonder, Dionne Warwick, and many other prominent entertainers was entered into the congressional record as the official black national anthem. Yeah. 
All right. But that's not all. In 2017, it was added to the United States National Recording Registry and preserved by the Li Library of Congress as an American oral treasure. Melba's latest work is her new album entitled Imagine, which I was listening to on the way over, which is absolutely tremendous. Please pick that album up. Uh, it was released in April, but it's beautiful. Melba continues to delight fans with performances at home and abroad. So I say let's meet the woman herself. Please help me welcome to the stage Melba Moore. We'll let the queen get comfortable on the throne here for just a second, if that's all right. Now, before we hear from Melba, we have three speakers here that would like to say a few words. Now, Melba has been friends with the first speaker for 45 years. Please help me welcome to the stage singer and actress Frida Payne. First of all, I'd like to say congratulations, Melba, my dear friend, for 45 years. The first time I saw Melba was when she was playing the role of Gussie Mae Lutabelle Jenkins in Pearly, and that was 1970. And then about six years later, I get a call from a Mr. Charles Huggins who says, I'm me and my new bride, we just started our own management company, and we've got two men working for us, Jerry Silverheart and Ran. Was that Ran Stahl? Anyway, anyway, I, and he said, we would love for you to come and join us. So I was their first artist on Hush Productions. It was back in, it was in 1977, and on top of that, we both, this was just a coincidence, but we were both pregnant with our first child. I had Gregory Abbott Jr., I had a boy, and she had a girl, Charlie, and she was born in June, and my son was born in September. I have also, I know that Melba has done, Melba was in Timbuktu with Eartha Kitt. And then she was in um, Innocent Black on Broadway. This was all Broadway, by the way. And um, I remember Melba and I did a double billing. We performed together in Atlantic City. And I believe the year was like 19, oh Lord. Anyway, it was in the 70s. <laughs> Anyway, it was, it was in the 70s, and we like opened the show together, and then I did my thing, and then she did her thing, and then we, we did a medley together, and this was wonderful. I, rem I remember Lou Rawls and Nancy Wilson came to see us that night, yeah. But we've had so much fun over the years, and I have watched her excel and excel, but then there was a period in her life where there it was a little dark period, and I won't go into that but we know that Melba came out of it. And God is good because we believe, I believe in retribution. And Melba Moore, you are a queen. You are a shining star of strength and one of the most fabulous vocalists I know. I love you, Melba Moore. <laughs> Woo! 
How about that? That was beautiful. But, but we're just getting started. Now, hold on. Thank you, Frida. Now, by the way, let me mention, Melba has a bunch of friends here in the audience who are all here to support her. Let's give it up for uh, Thelma Houston. It's Thelma Houston here. Where's Thelma? Yes. Yes. My girl, Thelma. Wonderful to see you, girl. We also have Shanice Wilson and Flex Alexander. All right. And I know the CQ family's in the house, so we'll shout them out. We also have Tisha Campbell. Of course, Tisha. Yeah, girl. Woo! You're fabulous. And how about Mr. Dion Cole in the audience? Dion. Don't let him take your body wash, brother. Don't let him take that body wash. All right. Thank you guys for attending today. <laughs> Our next spe speaker is a popular comedian, comedian, and you will know why shortly. Please help me welcome to the stage, Cat Williams. Um, Chat GBT accidentally gave me the same speech as Jimmy Jam, so I will have to go somewhat off the cuff this evening. Um, we are here to honor the extraordinary life and achievements of a true legend. And in these day and age, we call somebody a legend if they've been doing something for 20, 30 years. But to be at the top of your craft in stage, television, music, and film, there really has never been anything like it. I looked up who paved the way for Melba Moore, who was the person that excelled in all of those things. And I found out that that person did not exist. Melba Moore is a one of one in our industry, and that's what we're celebrating. Uh, beyond the bright lights of Broadway and television, Melba Moore's recording career has spanned six decades. Let that sink in, six decades and solidified her as a musical icon to this very day. People are listening to club classics like you stepped into my life and love's coming at you because it never ages just like Melba Moore. As a young man with a mustache growing up in Dayton, Ohio, I thought that Melba Moore exemplified the elegance, grace, dignity, and strength of the black woman. This strength and her ability to turn adversity into fuel for her art is a testament to her unwavering determination. She was the first person with trampoline skin. It may look like she fell down, but she didn't. I hope to have inherited that. As we celebrate Melba Moore's legacy by honoring her with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, we are reminded that true greatness extends beyond the boundaries of talent alone. Ms. Moore's advocacy for social change and her commitment to uplifting others demonstrate the depth of character and the compassion she has carried with her throughout her life. So we salute you your artistry, your spirit, your legacy, your life is a testament to the power of perseverance, and your story and this star will forever inspire generations to come. Thank you for enriching our lives with your talent, and may your star continue to shine brightly in the hearts of all of those that love and admire you. It's Melba Moore, ladies and gentlemen. One more time for Cat Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad for Chat GPT. Um, <laughs> no. Um, so, for our final speaker of the day, an actress and comedian, Lunell Campbell.
Who told you to lose my government name up here? I'm not, I don't use Campbell for a reason. I'm getting a couple of things cleared up, God dog. And now you got me out here in the middle of the street hollering my government name on TV. Ooh. <laughs> Tonight, I will be reading a statement written in the absence of your friend, icon herself, Miss Cheryl Lee Roth. Before I do that, Melba and I are two unlikely friends, I know. But we are. I came from theater before I did anything else. I'd never heard a voice like yours. You were so perky, and then when you got with that fine Clifton Davis, and y'all had that show, it wasn't just Sonny and Cher, it was Melbourne Moore Clifton Davis Hour as well. And I loved it, and this is such an honor for me. If I never get to stand up here for myself, I'm so excited to be able to stand up here for you, okay? Okay. Now this is in the words of the Cheryl Lee Ralph, Ron and Melba. <laughs> I know my team has reached out to you about my not being able to attend your star ceremony. And if it wasn't necessary for me to absolutely miss it, you know I would be there. I am deeply sorry that I am unable to participate as planned, but it is an emergency that must be tended to, and the date that I have been given coincides. Yeah, yeah, Cheryl. Okay, so. <laughs> I know that this recognition is a testament to your immense talent, hard work, and significant impact you have made in the world of music and entertainment, but I have been working on my remarks and wanted to share these with you. To everyone gathered here today in celebration of Melba Moore, let me tell you, I have always admired Melba Moore's extraordinary contributions to the arts. I'll never forget seeing her on stage in Pearly on Broadway. She won a Tony Award. It was a high school field trip, and I wanted to be on the Broadway stage. Her summertime TV variety show with Clifton Davis was must-see TV for me. The hair, the clothes, the glamour. I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to be Melba Moore. <laughs> Over the years, Melba, you've been nothing short of awe-inspiring, captivating audiences worldwide with your incredible vocal prowess and artistic brilliance. Your ability to convey emotions through your artistry has served as a profound source of inspiration and motivation for me in my own creative journey. Your dedication to your craft and your relentless pursuit of excellence through good times and personal bad times. They just won't let a chick overcome, will they? They, they just won't let, that's all right, I, I've been through some things too, Melba. Okay. <laughs> through good times and personal bad times, have set an example for countless artists like myself. With each note you sing and every character you portray, you have touched the hearts of countless individuals, leaving a lasting impact on the world of music and theater. Today, as your star is laid, know that your honor may have been delayed, but you have not been denied. Once again, my friend, I am thrilled for you, and I congratulate you on this well-deserved recognition. Your Hollywood Walk of Fame star is not only a celebration of your incredible talent, but also a testimony to the enduring legacy you have created through your art. Your journey as an artistic has touched lives, including mine, and I will forever be grateful 
for the inspiration you have provided me and countless others, Melba. I'm wishing you continued success and fulfillment in all your future endeavors. With the utmost admiration and respect for you, Diva, congratulations on your Hollywood Walk of Fame star, Diva Melba Moore. One more time for Lunell. Was that better, Lunell? Was that? I left that last part out. That was good, right? Okay. Just Lunell, y'all. Edit that other stuff out. All right. I had the honor of uh, having him introduce me, so now I get to introduce him. Please give it up for the president and CEO of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, Steve Nissen. Thank you again. So uh, as you may know, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce administers the Walk of Fame on behalf of the city of Los Angeles. But before I do the official thing with the proclamation, one observation, Melba Moore, this is the first time that I've witnessed the honoree walks up, sees, this is about 30 minutes ago, sees the MC and starts screaming. <laughs> And I thought, oh my God, did we make a bad choice here? Uh, <laughs> now you all know what scream I'm talking about, right? Because I heard it several more times. It's, it's the scream of happiness. And so let me say, this star is just uh, feet away from one of the most famous corners in the world, Hollywood and Vine. And I walk down this street almost every day. So, uh, Melba, every time I pass your star, I'm going to hear that scream. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so even though we're in a place called Hollywood, we are in the city of Los Angeles. We are in what's called the 13th Council District, represented by Councilman Hugo Soto Martinez. On behalf of the councilman, I'd like to present you with a resolution on behalf of the city, the mayor, our councilman, and declare today Melba Moore Day in Hollywood. Wow. Okay, so now we've heard some wonderful speeches, and now how about we hear from the Queen herself? I'd now like to present our newest Walk of Famer, Melba Moore. I promise not to scream. Ah! I lied! This was never in my radar. I never had any thoughts or dreams about being on Hollywood Vine in the pavement. Seriously, um, it's, it's so amazing. 
I don't really have words, but I wrote a few things down because <clears throat> I knew that I would get so dumbfounded, I, I wouldn't be able to say anything. So I hope I'm telling you a few things that you haven't been told already. I was born in Harlem Hospital, New York City, to a single parent mother. She was a, 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 her first profession was as a big band singer. My father's name was Teddy Hill. He was a well-known big band leader. And he also managed Mitten's Playhouse, one of the most famous jazz nightclubs in Harlem during the bebop and modern jazz era. Musicians like Dizzy Gillespie, and Miles Davis, and many, many other jazz greats played at Mitten's Playhouse and in my father Teddy Hill's band. As a matter of fact, Mitten's Playhouse is still open. My mother and daddy never married. Uh, excuse me, my mother and Teddy Hill never married. Mother traveled a lot, and she was away from our home a lot. So you might say, I was a product of an absentee father and mother. Plus, she brought my grandmother, her mother, to New York from Birmingham, Alabama, to try to take care of her, because my grandmother had had strokes. So, mother hired someone to take care of me and grandma. Her name was Lulu Hawkins. We called her Mama Lou. She was orphaned, illiterate, and of course, she was a domestic. We don't know when or where she was born. We don't know anything about her family. But the last place she remembered living and growing up and working was Salisbury, North Carolina, on somebody's sharecropper farm. She made it to New York City working as a housekeeper for a family that was coming to New York. I know this because of all the stories that she used to tell me about that and about her picking cotton and tobacco and uh, uh, chop chopping tobacco and uh, slaughtering hogs and all that kind of stuff. Now, the reason I'm focusing on Mama Lou for just a moment is because, first of all, she's, she raised me. Second of all, she's probably the reason that I won the Tony Award for my betrayal of Ludie Bell Gussie Mae Jenkins as an orphan, illiterate, domestic on Broadway in the musical Pearly. People thought I had studied acting, but I was just imitating Mama Lou. Mother met a gentleman from Newark, New Jersey, named Clem Mormon. He was a piano player, and he had a group called the Piccadilly Pipers. He hired Mother to be, his lead, to be the lead singer. That's when she gave herself the stage name, Bonnie Davis. She made several recordings under that name, too. But they fell in love and got married. So me, Mama Lou, Grandma, Mother moved to Newark, New Jersey to live with my new stepdad and his son, Dennis, his daughter, Clementine, and later we had two half-brothers, Elliot and Gerard Mormon. <clears throat> I was nine years old at the time. So I went from being an only child, a very lonely child, in a broken family with no music to speak of in our lives. I went from that to being a part of a whole family, a sister, three brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, mother, father, grandparents, relatives of the wild zoo. And music became the centerpiece of our lives. Daddy made all of us kids take piano lessons. Sometimes their band, the Piccadilly Pipers, would rehearse in our home. Can you imagine a live band in your living room? I went to Arts High School in Newark, and I majored in vocal music. I went to Montclair State Teachers College and got a Bachelor of Arts degree in, in mu uh, vocal music education. And my first job, my first profession, was as a Newark Public School classroom vocal music teacher. Did that for several years, and then I said to my parents, but I want to be a performer like you. So Daddy did his best to get me into the entertainment industry. And so I, I met a lot of people, but one of the people I met, I met was Valerie Simpson. And she's the one that got me started as a studio backup singer in the, in the entertainment industry. Of course, Nick Ashford was there. He was just getting started in the industry, too, as a backup singer. Can I tell you something? Those days, was, they were just so much fun. <laughs> One of the recording sessions was for Galt McDermott. He wrote the music for the Broadway musical Hair. 
and he was also the music director. He was assisted by, his, uh, by, by the two stars of, of the play, Jim Rado and Jerry Ragney. They were still casting, and the session was about two weeks long. So Jim, Jerry, and Galt invited everybody on, this, on the session to come and sing for the producer and the director and promised us places in the play. It wasn't really audition, they were still looking for strong singers. Well, I went and sang for the director and the pr producer, and I got in. Well, after I had been in the show for a while, my friend and fellow cast member, Mary Lawrence da L Laurie Davis, who's here today, and who also is a very loud-mouthed black young woman, sitting right, where are you, Mary? She's still got a big mouth. Mary's very special, because she said to the producer, she said to the producers, how come y'all don't never let a black woman try out for the lead part? So Jim and Jerry and Gold said, well, they just had never thought about it. So they uh, rehearsed me and let me uh, perform for a, mat uh, a matinee, and I got the part, I got the lead. So Mary is the reason I even have a, had a chance to try out for the lead, so thank you, Mary. There are a lot of very talented young ladies that played the lead of Sheila in that uh, play, but one of them was Diane Keaton, so I wound up replacing Diane Keaton. <laughs> okay, let me see what was I saying here. <laughs> okay, I did that. So I just want to uh, acknowledge my own mi mind and memory, because I'm very, very nervous up here. I, I never had any thought that I'd, I'd be up here doing this. But I would say for, for hair, it broke all the rules, it opened up all the doors for us, and I could never have imagined the amazing things that have happened to me because of that experience along my journey. Things that have been mentioned, like uh, the Melbourne Moore Clifton Davis show, my guest appearances on Ed Sullivan, Johnny Carson, Carol Burnett, Cliff Wilson, yes. Bing Crosby, Bill Cosby. <laughs> and I want to, thank, uh, want to thank Jerry Selverhart, who's here, who was part of our management. Where are you, Jerry? Help, help me say thank you to Jerry, please. We did so many things that I'm not able to mention here because I, I don't have a memory like he does. But um, I was a guest uh, on soap operas, uh, the Academy Awards, just to name a few. And I want to say thank you to those that were responsible for my very long and successful recording career, including a new project that's out now that Jimmy Jam was telling you just about now, which is headed by my daughter, Charlie Huggins, and her uncle, Bo. Would you stand up, Charlie, so my people can see how my beautiful daughter is? <laughs> This new project is on her label. It's called Gallery Entertainment. It's called Imagine. And it's, uh, she's just added a new bonus record, uh, which is a cover, or excuse me, a remake, a remake of the classic R&B hit by my friends Nick Ashford and Valerie Simpson. I'm laughing because I can't even talk. I'm too excited and nervous. But I got to say this and, and acknowledge it. And this is the first speech I've ever tried to, to write. So hopefully I get a lot more awards and I'll learn how to write speeches. I can't believe the incredible things that are happening to me right now. I'm so grateful to be still doing the things that I love to do. And still, it still feeds my soul. I'm so excited about it. I'm grateful for my family being my biggest advocates. I'm grateful for Ms. Frieda Payne for being such a good friend over the years. Ms. Cheryl Lee Ralph. Uh, uh, for uh, Mr. Cat Williams, you are an angel. You know what I'm talking about. Your kindness, your generosity is unmeasured and unmatched. Miss Lunell, baby, you are one of a kind. I love her, and I, I speak with her very often only because she's just a good person. She just comes in and warms you and lets you know that you're somebody that matters to her and, and to the world. She, she lets you know that you matter on this, on this, on this planet. <clears throat> I, <laughs> you already know, uh, I want to say thank you to Mr. Richard J. Alexander. He's the one who cast me as the first black fontine in Les Miserables. And you know, it's not about a black people, it's about a French revolution. 
So that was very creative casting. I want to say thank you to Ron Richardson here, who's brought incredible people into my life. I want to say thank you. I want to thank you to Dean Nice and Club Quarantine and the Club Quarantine crew. Anybody here from them? Cross the street. Ah! How amazing they have been in keeping me out there and relevant to everything that's continuing to go on. Our society is changing in, in volatile ways and dynamic ways. And because somebody like Dean Nice and Club Quarantine are there, we're part of the mix in a positive, beautiful way, continuing to do what we can to make society a better place because of our presence. I'm grateful for the Huggins family, Hush Productions, Orpheus Entertainment, the Gallery Entertainment. I want to say thank you to everybody that's here today to make this, to make this possible for me. <clears throat> I know that it took a lot of time. I know that, that it took a lot of uh, commitment. And I want to thank you all for acknowledging me. I want, to, I want to thank you for coming here physically to do this and to support me and congratulate me and share with me a once-in-a-lifetime moment. This will never, ever, ever, ever happen again. Thanking you for having, making it happen for me. The Chamber of Commerce, thank you. There's so many people that, that had something to do with making this happen that I don't know who you are, but I thank you. <laughs> I said cat, didn't I say cat? I better say cat. I have so many friends here, and I just want to say, although it's redundant, I don't have a lot of words, but you'll see by my life that I live that I really do appreciate your lives that you have. You've given me a piece of your life. And it's very, very important, not only for here, but we please God when we do this. And he promises that, that we will have life eternal. We will have it good. We will have it with our friends that we shared here because we did good things with each other and for each other. And I want you to know that I'm humble, Okay, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I want you to, to know that I'm honored, that I'm absolutely astonished. I never, ever, ever thought of anything like this. I never even thought about it. I'm really kind of dumbfounded. And I want you to know from the very bottom of my heart, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you! Melba Moore, ladies and gentlemen. And now I think it's time to unveil the star.
I'll wait to your left. The other left, to the right. Right down center, right down center, right here.
Straight ahead. Jimmy, straight ahead. Keep going to your right, guys. There we go, right in the middle.
Thank you. 